20 dumb Minecraft hacks that actually work. Sometimes an idea seems silly on paper, but great in execution. And in a game like Minecraft, plenty of those oddballs can work out. And that's what we'll see today. And hey, as you can see from this number, we are getting painfully close to 4 million subscribers. It's, it's so close we could hit it next week if you subscribe. So if you enjoyed the video, consider checking that red sub button below. It's free and it helps out a ton. Number one, llamas are neutral mobs, which means they only become hostile when provoked. And lucky for us, using llamas to create armchairs doesn't provoke them. Now putting one of these in your living room by itself doesn't quite do the job. But surprisingly, all we need is a splash of invisibility to do the trick. When under this effect, we can only see the carpet, letting us get a proper selection of cushions for your sofa. And while the methods might be questionable, it's hard to deny the results. And with the help of commands, we can keep these llama helpers invisible long enough for the guests to arrive. So if you're tired of squatting on yet another stair, this might be the best solution. Number two, most people build their elevators the old fashioned way. And the original water elevator is about as classic as they come. But if you've got a few hundred bottles of honey lying around, you might want to keep this trick in mind. See, if we were to take all of these honey bottles and make them into a honey block, you'd notice that they don't quite have a full hitbox. And if you place two honey blocks like so, you can see that where they almost meet, a player's hitbox is able to interact with the water inside, letting us lift up almost like magic. And by doing this, we get to play around a lot more with how our standard water elevator looks anyway. Since if you wanted to, you could add a map art item frame and completely hide the inside. And at that point, it really does seem like magic. Number three, thinking of the right name for a pet can be tough work. So if you're really strapped for options, this might be a good fallback. All we'll need is a bit of ingenuity and a complete lack of remorse. See, if we were to take one of the name tags that we got from exploring and put it into an anvil, then all we've got to do is go into our settings, change our native language, and then rewrite the name of the name tag as, well, name tag. And then once we change our language back, you notice that we're finally able to name a name tag, name tag, and use it as a name tag for our new animal. So if you want to circumvent this one Mojang rule, I guess this is the way to do it. Though I might add, your pet might hate you for it. Number four, these ordinary fences work just fine for keeping the friendly mobs in and the unfriendly mobs out. And really that's all you need out of a fence. But what if you want to lure the mobs inside of the fenced area and then trap them there? Well, wouldn't you know it, but with trap doors, we can actually make a unique fence that does just that. With trap doors lined up like such in the same direction, all we have to do is wait for nightfall and then any zombie or creeper that stumbles into the trap won't be able to escape. And the reason being is because they don't see these hitboxes as something they're able to jump over. And just like that, we're able to hop over with these and we can keep the rest of our mobs inside until we flip the gate. And honestly, that's about all we need. Number five, shulker boxes are good for far more than just holding your loot. And thanks to their hitboxes, we can use these just as much as a block as we would as a backpack. See, if you're playing on bedrock, you may be able to exploit an interesting bug that allows us to walk through walls. No joke, and the execution's actually quite simple. All we need to do is place a shulker box on the side, stand it against a wall, and then open it up for us to be pushed through. And sure enough, as the box expands, we're pushed over to the other side, and we can make quite the escape this way. So if you're looking to get into your friend's base or pull off a magic trick, I think this does a good job at both. Number six, the Minecraft community spends hours upon hours to find new and creative ways to frustrate the game's developers. And the most recent example of this is the updated double carpet glitch. See, before Mojang patched the original, we could use these double carpeted gaps to freeze mobs in certain squares. And that was a great help for keeping your villagers stuck in one place in the trading hall. But unfortunately, that glitch didn't last too long. At least, not in that format. But now, we can do basically the same thing by just placing these carpets over bushes instead. And really, whether you're trying to keep the peaceful or the hostile mobs stuck in one place, this just proves the berry bushes can do quite the trick. Number seven, minecarts are most players' first experience with using redstone. And most players are perfectly fine with using these railroads to get down to the mine shafts or just around their base. But if you're like me, fast isn't fast enough. And thankfully, we don't need any kind of third party help to beef up our minecarts. But rather, by just arranging the tracks in little circles, we can glitch out the minecarts to move at serious speeds. And while you might want to pop an aspirin for the whiplash, it's a small price to pay to move around your base this fast. And hey, with the help of a boat, we can even do this in a two person minecart. So with you and a friend can enjoy the high powered rails as a team. Just one piece of advice, don't try this out on VR. Number eight, by this point, I'm sure plenty of us are guilty of kidnapping villagers. And while the most straightforward and common way to do that is by nudging them into boats, this might be something to reconsider. Because if you have a herd of cows laying around, we could get them to do the kidnapping for us. By guiding around a group of animals with some kind of food, we can surround the villager and lure them to wherever we want, even through water. And if you wanted to, you could even do this with several villagers at once, which is crazy, but if you want to cut down on trips, it might be necessary. So whether you got cows, pigs, or sheep on hand to help you out, any of those should do the trick. We just wouldn't recommend doing it with goats. Otherwise, that villager might get rammed into a ravine. Number nine, pillagers are some of the hardest mobs to beat if you're early in the game, and those crossbows can pack a mean punch. But if you have a boat in the spare time, we can actually disarm these pillagers and then let them loose. See, just like the crossbows that you and I use, these pillagers' weapons have a durability limit similar to any other tool in the game. And by placing them inside that boat, they'll harmlessly empty their quiver and destroy that entire bow. And then after disarming the pillagers, us and Java can turn 
turn them free and leave them to wander aimlessly throughout the village for the next few days. And believe me, this is definitely the weirdest way to get through a pillager raid. But in my eyes, he'll still be the hero of the village. Number 10. Mojang has never cared much for the laws of physics. And there have been plenty of posts made complaining about these nonsensical bits in Minecraft. I mean, we're even guilty of that ourselves. But who among us would complain about being able to become an actual waterbender? See, by using sticky pistons and honey blocks, we can make the water fall however we want it to. And then once you remove it, it'll actually stay that way. Simply build your structure, pour some water over top, and then break all of the blocks that you used when you're done. I mean, if you wanted to, you could use lava as well to make your own kind of modern art piece. Though to me, it looks more like a fire hazard. And really, however you choose to use this trick, it's sure to impress even the most seasoned of players. Number 11. There are really only so many ways to build a farm in Minecraft. And eventually, the whole process does tend to get a bit repetitive. So why don't we flip that whole notion on its head? Literally. Apparently, if we use the dinner bone Easter egg that you get through the name tags, we could make something of a peculiar site. And sure enough, if you build your farm upside down and then use a lead with a fence to keep those animals up, it'll make the mobs look like they're defying gravity and keeping up to the ceiling. Which is wild to see, but what's crazier is that it even works in survival. And even if it's not cheating, it's a trick that's sure to make your friends and the local villagers a bit uncomfortable. And as long as the leads don't break, then I'm sure the animals will be on board for it too. Number 12. Cows and pigs are free roaming creatures, and they shouldn't be locked up together in a tight spot. But for the sake of science, this isn't exactly free range. Since, as you can see, if we cram a bunch of entities into a one by one square, we can create our own catapult to launch us farther than any kind of TNT cannon. And while it's not particularly humane, the glitch does make for an impressive and lightning fast getaway. So at the very least, if you're trying to escape those PETA charges, this might do the trick. Simply jump in the hole, activate your elytra, and then point in the direction you want to go. And just like that, you'll shoot off into the sky. Just make sure you don't cram one too many mobs into the space. Number 13. Getting onto the nether roof is a tricky business. And while we typically use ender pearls, those are expensive and painful. So if you're on a budget, this might be the best way out. Luckily, using this glitch, we can make it possible to phase through just about any block, including bedrock. See, since their hitboxes are so weird, all we need to do is place a boat like so underneath the composter, and just like that, we gain ourselves away right up to no man's land. Which, for a couple of planks, is a lot easier to come by than a set of ender pearls. Just make sure you bring the materials to find a way out. Otherwise, you'll be pretty trapped up there. Number 14. If you know how to use it, then redstone can open up a new world to Minecraft. Truly, in the right hands, it's an amazing resource. But as useful as it is, sometimes redstone can be a bit unsightly. But don't worry, with an item frame and a map, it's possible to make that redstone basically invisible. As you'll notice, item frames are entities like you and me, meaning we can overlap their hitboxes with the redstone like so. And then once we add in some map art to match the floor, we've got some unnoticeable redstone. And honestly, I hope this will let some builders finally mess around with the redstone side in their builds, because that's a holy matrimony I'd be happy to see. Number 15. When you attach a compass to a lodestone, it could be immensely useful in some cases, but it can also get immensely confusing when there's more than one of them. And if you forgot to name them, then it's easy for even veteran players to get mixed up between one lodestone compass with another. And then you'll find yourself in a completely different biome. But with the new bundles, we can stay easily organized and keep track of what compass points where. By putting the type of block that the related compass points towards in the slot above it, you'll be able to avoid getting turned around a lot easier. That way, if you're looking for the nether portal, just look for the one that has netherrack above it, and so on from there. And once you get it set up, it's a simple system to keep track of. And once you do, it'll save you a ton of time and headaches. Number 16. When you're playing with friends, betrayal is an obvious choice. And while the motives might be questionable, the results can pay off big. So to do just that, why not swap out our pressure pads for something a bit more secretive? See, even if there's a carpet on top, this redstone ore still triggers the same way when you walk over it. Meaning if we face an observer the right way, we can make something of a death trap hidden in your rug. And while it might take some time to cool down, it only has to work once to do the trick. Just make sure the trap you plan has enough firepower to take out that victim. Otherwise, you're gonna have one very angry person looking for revenge. Number 17. Glow lichen is one of the more underappreciated features in the Caves and Cliffs update. And while it isn't as flashy as the others, that doesn't mean we can't find a use for it. And up here on the surface, we don't need it for lighting up. So I think this does the trick instead. See, by lining our walls with some of this stuff, we can block out the water flow from the bubble elevator and get a seamless path towards the entrance. And hey, it's a lot less intrusive than a sign, so I'd count this as the better option. So if you've already got a well-lit base, this might be used for that chest of lichen you've been hoarding. Number 18. As Minecraft is a game of blocks, then building works off something of a grid system. But just because that's what Mojang intended, doesn't mean we have to obey. And what better way to rebel than by creating off-center blocks? See, with the way that stairs overlap, it's possible to mimic the look of an off-the-grid block like so. And while the blocks that we can do this with are limited to the ones with stair variants, that still gives us plenty of variety. And as simple as it is to use, this method can really add a nice touch to your house. So while I doubt we'll see real off-center blocks from Mojang going forward, that won't at least stop you from turning some heads when you show this off the next build showcase. Number 19. A shield can be a valuable asset for your offhand slot, but the limited mobility that comes with is something of a downside. 
side. So to avoid that, we might need to use this nether portal solution. As you'll see, if we step through the portal with our shield engaged, then once we reach the other side, it'll still be functional, but now with an extra feature, because now we're able to sprint and attack as we would without it. And that can clearly help to work through the next nether fortress. Hey, you might even consider using this solution the next time you're raiding your friend's base. Just be careful you don't accidentally engage your shield again during PvP. That kind of mistake could land you right back at spawn. Number 20. Nobody likes being on the receiving end of knockback. But while it's a pain to be tossed around, this might make it necessary. See, in Bedrock, it's possible to repeatedly punch against your buddy's shield. So if we do that, we can use the knockback that we receive as something of a boost to the new heights. And then we could alternate our positions with them to net some serious verticality. And it might just be the way you and your pal escape out of any future rock in a hard place. And the best part about it is that this is basically just an unintentional feature. So it's not a glitch that's going to get patched. But whether Mojang takes it out or not, one thing is for certain. It's a trick that's sure to give you and your friends quite the boost. And with that, folks, have a good one. All right.